Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you find all the tips, tricks, and inspiration on my channel on your Tumblr journey. Today we're going to be working on this overdone true crime Tumblr, but I really wanted to put a couple of twists on here to help it stand out from all of the others that you see within the Tumblr community. So we're gonna do a couple of new things here and we're gonna try an experiment. And spoiler alert, it worked and I'm very excited. So we're gonna start off with a white prepped tumbler. This is a 24 ounce prepped from the Tipsy Magnolia. And I did pop off the base of this tumbler because we are going to do a snow globe booty. So in hindsight, I would have spray painted the base white as well. For some reason, I was thinking that I was going to glitter it red. I don't know what I was thinking, um, but I ended up having to go back in with acrylic paint to paint that white because I didn't realize until after I had glittered and epoxied the cup that the base needed to be white as well. So just skip that step and paint it all white, glitter all white at once if you're replicating this. So we're gonna go in with the epoxy method and mix about 50-50 of Flurries and Opal Majesty from Peachy Olive Glitters into a cup and we're going to epoxy until smooth. It took me two coats of the Flint Sisters Artist Cure Resin to get that completely smooth. And then once the tumbler is smooth and there's no sanding marks on it. We are gonna go in with the blood splatter and I'm going to hand splatter this instead of having to rely on like a water slide or decals. This is just a super quick and simple way. You can put the splatters where you want them. You can work them around your decals or whatever elements you're using on the tumbler. So I really like this method. It's quick and cheap and straight to the point. So <laughs> I definitely would recommend this. I've used it a couple of times. Here you're seeing me mix up about 10 milliliters of UV resin into about five milliliters of that glitter mixture that I had mentioned previously. And I did not want a really thick layer of resin in this bottom because I wanted there to be enough space when I put the acetate sheet over top of it to create that snow globe. I still wanted there to be quite a bit of room for the liquid to move in that snow globe base. So I really wanted to avoid filling that very full with that UV resin. And I left that cure for about 99 seconds. It cured pretty quick because it's a light colored glitter so that UV light was able to penetrate the resin pretty well. And then here I'm taking just acrylic paint. This is just cheapy from Hobby Lobby. It's like 69, 79 cents, something like that. Um, and I'm mixing a bunch of red into one single drop of black acrylic paint. And that gave me a blood color that was pretty dead on what I was going for. So I would recommend if you don't find the perfect color in you know, a, a paint bottle, experiment put it on a plate or in a cup and just experiment with the color and what i'm doing here is taking a denture brush <laughs> i just got this at walgreens it was a couple of bucks but it's a really hard bristled brush and it gives a really really great splatter effect and so the more paint that you put on the brush the thicker the spots are going to be so you can see here it's pretty light um, and then when i go thicker the splatters are much more concentrated much larger um, so depending on the effect that you're going for if you like that thin kind of spritz you would go light on the paint you can keep building as you see fit but if you like more of the spread out splatter effect then I would go a little bit thicker on the paint so you get those bigger clumps. And once that was completely dry, I let it sit for a couple of hours just to air dry. Um, I just went over the spot with UV resin where I had planned on putting my decal or my sticker cal because it's a clear backed base and not an actual vinyl that I would like cut on my Cricut. 
I made sure that the blood splatters that we had created with that acrylic paint were under epoxy because if you were to put that sticker cal underneath or not underneath uh, over top of your acrylic paint and it wasn't glossy you would see underneath that sticker cal that the paint is not going to be glossy so it's gonna be pretty obvious so I just made sure to go over that with UV resin and then in addition to that, I went over the splatter that I had put on the bottom of the cup as well. It's totally optional to put the splatter on the bottom. It's gonna be covered up with that bloody snow globe that we're gonna do on the bottom here. So it's not a necessity to do that. Looking at mine as it's finished, you can't tell that I put the splatter there. So I wouldn't, you don't have to do it, you can if you would like, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. It seemed at this point kind of a waste of time um, just because it got covered up with all of the liquid that we put in there. So if you do end up putting a blood splatter on the bottom of the cup, just make sure you're covering that in UV resin. So once you get your liquids in the bottom, that paint is not going to dissolve into your liquids. Next, I'm going in with my hot glue gun to create my blood drips. And I had um, a red glittery glue stick on hand that I just decided to use. You can use any color as long as you are confident in your rhinestone skills. That you're not gonna see any gapping between um, and that the color of your glue, stri glue stick drip is not going to be exposed between the rhinestones. You can use any color, you could use clear, whatever you want to use. I just had this and figured it would be better than, you know, having to paint the drip red or something like that. So what I'm doing is just going around the cup and I opted to use the glue stick because it gives really good long drips that I was going for. Most of the time when I use epoxy or um, like thickened epoxy or uh, what's it called? Nice and thick from Counterculture. Um, I get really short drips. And so in order to get that long dripping effect like you would get with a blood drip, I just decided to use my glue stick, went around the top and where I wanted the really long drips, I just put really globbed on glue if that makes sense at the top um, and so that gave me the longer drips where I wanted it shorter I obviously put less glue in that area and then anything that needed to be smoothed out I just barely hit it with my heat gun it heats up and melts really really easily so just be very cautious of that and then in order to combat that really kind of jagged glue rim that I had um, created. I just took my heat gun and barely heated up the very rim of the epoxy, not the epoxy, the hot glue. Um, and then once it was warm to the touch and you could feel that it was a little bit squishy, I just took it and put that on my cup edging tool to expose the white glitter underneath it, essentially creating what we know as the stainless steel rim that we adhere our epoxy to. But in this case, what we're looking to do is create a straight line on the rim of the cup. So once we are laying down our first row of rhinestones along the top of the rim, we're just ensuring that when we put that lid on, the rhinestones are going to be in a smooth line that it's not going to impede with the way that the lid fits on the cup. We want to make sure that that lid fits flush to the top of the tumbler. So cleaning that up just really helped in ensuring that we had a straight line to start out that blood drip um, when we started adhering those rhinestones. Okay, so we all know that the true crime tumblers are all overdone. So I wanted to do one, but I wanted to create something a little bit different than normal. So I thought, well, maybe I can do a blood drip or a blood splatter, I guess, um, in the cavity of this as like a snow globe. And so I created 
this mixture and we're going to put this in here with an acetate sheet over it so there's essentially real blood or what looks to be real blood in the bottom so i'm going to show you guys how to do that so what i have here is just a mixing cup and i'm going to put red with one black of one black one drop of black ink to create a true blood color and we're going to mix that into this mixing cup so i don't know how many that is probably like two and a half milliliters maybe let me see Uh, no, probably like one and a half milliliters. And then just one drop of black. So I don't want it to overpower, but I also don't want it just like a super bright red because that's not actually what blood looks like. So once I've got that in my cup, I'm gonna take the vegetable glycerin. Actually, I'm gonna mix this up real quick. Now it gives it that dark red look. And I'm just gonna squirt a bunch in here. I'm not measuring anything. We're gonna mix it up really good. It wants to separate if you can see that. Maybe. But I wanna mix it up really good. It's gonna look kind of weird colored. Don't be alarmed. As long as you're doing one drop of red or one drop of black, you should be good. So see how it gives it that red bloody effect. Okay, so I think that's good. And if you're doing a blood splatter on the bottom, make sure you're epoxying over it because once you put liquid in here, it's going to react with the acrylic paint and then it's just going to dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. I can't talk, guys. <laughs> it's a struggle. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to set that to the side. Clean this off. Okay, and then what we're going to use next is just plain baby oil. So before I do that, I'm going to get my acetate sheet ready. Okay. So I want to cut a little bit, ooh, over the edge. Okay, so what I'm doing is filling this with baby oil. Just gonna kind of scoop it out the edges. I really, I could have squeezed it in this outer ring, but I didn't want to chance getting it on the rim here. 
And then of course, oil is going to repel the epoxy. And there's a chance that the acetate sheet wouldn't stick. And then you're gonna have a leaky cup. So I'm not even gonna go down that road. It's a little too close to the top for my comfort. So I'm gonna remove a little bit of that. And then I'm just gonna pour this in. I'm gonna do the same thing. Pull it around the edges. Okay, so I realize this looks horrible right now, but once you shake it, it is going to look like a bloody snow globe. So I'm just looking eye level to see how close it is to the top. It's a little bit deceiving when you're looking at like an aerial view of it. But what I'm looking for is that it's not coming up to the very top. I'm gonna take my acetate sheet and I'm gonna put a thin line of UV resin along the top and we'll flash cure that. Okay, and this is my official announcement that I'm not a fan of resin rockers. It is taking probably two to three times longer to cure this UV resin with resin rockers than it does for the CC DIY UV resin. So I, at this point in time, cannot recommend this as something that you guys are gonna get a recommendation from, for me, for me, from me, whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. It just, I don't know. I'm curing it for like, six, seven minutes at a time per section. And it's just not curing. But then I go and take my CCDIY and it's curing within 99 seconds. So, I don't know. I'm just not a fan. I don't know. I have the professional grade lamp and it's just not doing it for me okay so as long as that is all adhered there are no holes around the edges Nothing's gonna escape. I'm gonna put my lamp on it real quick. Okay, let me fully cure this. Everything is sealed in. All right, so everything is sealed in nice and tight. The idea is there, we just gotta go back and fill in this air bubble. Oops. 
probably take my wet epoxy gloves off, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna grab my Dremel and I'm just gonna do like a burr hole in this since it's obviously too late to cut it out with scissors or an X-Acto. So I use this for keychains. I'm just gonna use it and hope that it doesn't put the plastic into the hole. Hoping it just sticks to this. little points or these points these little needle tips that I got for my rhinestone glue bottle I have a bunch of extra squeezies I'm just gonna put this on here Adapt and overcome, guys. exactly what I wanted to avoid. So we're going to have to do a good cleanup job because we don't want oil repelling our epoxy. Oh gosh. Moral of the story is don't be like me and just put a hole in there to begin with. Put a drop of this right on top of the hole. And immediately flash cure that. So no more oil can come out and then we're gonna clean it. alcohol to get the oil off. Now that that's clean, I'm gonna take just a little piece of the acetate sheet and I'm gonna glue it right over the hole just to make triple sure that we are not gonna have any of this mixture leaking out. I'm 
just gonna dab this UV resin right back over that hole. So that is all cured. That is the effect that we were going for. So I have about 30 milliliters of just regular setting Flint Sisters Artist Cure Resin, and I'm going to seal everything in, including these drips. We're going to rhinestone them, but I don't want to apply it directly to the glue and then have the glue break off somehow, or I don't know, and then lose the rhinestones. So we're going to epoxy them. And the reason I didn't go in with just a rhinestone drip is because I wanted that 3D effect. So I'm gonna work really hard to, when I apply it to this side of the drip, I want to make sure it's not pulled up so we don't lose that 3D effect. But when we go up here, I'm hoping that'll pull up a little bit so it can kind of gradually with this epoxy on there taper off to the top of the cup so it's not such a big gap between the white glitter and this hot glue drip that we did. So I'm hoping that will be the outcome because I don't want it to just stop and start into the drip really harshly I want it to be kind of a gradual, natural thing. And I think once we apply the rhinestones, that will happen. But I'm gonna need it to pull up a little bit at the top, but not at the bottom so we don't lose that 3D effect, if that all makes sense. And we want the rhinestones to be the very last thing that we do. So all of the epoxy work needs to be done on this everything finalized and then we can apply the rhinestones because if you epoxy over rhinestones they will lose all of their sparkle so definitely don't do that Just gonna get all of this covered up and then we'll go back in and do some damage control and pull that epoxy down out of those drips so it's not pooled but right now I just want to make sure all of the crevices are filled there's no gaps in the epoxy on the drips get everything along the rim You don't want so much that it's going to just like fall off the rim into the inside of the cup. A little bit of dripping is fine, but you don't want so much. But I did this. I used my um, edging tool because the hot glue was not even, and I figured that would kind of throw off the rhinestone look. I wanted a crisp, clean top. And I did not feel like I could accomplish that with how uneven that glue was at the top. So I just heated that up and then used my edging tool and that worked out perfectly. Okay, so I think we're good with that. I'm gonna make sure I get the bottom. We want all of that snow globe drip that we did on the bottom covered up. 
I'm hoping this will be the last coat of epoxy that I have to do. Just gonna make sure everything's fully coated and then we'll go up and pull that epoxy from those drips. So 30 milliliters was too much. I used about 20 to get full coverage. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just take this, kind of pull it out and wipe it off. I just want there to be some definition between the drip and where the white glitter is. Okay, and then we're gonna go smooth everything back out. Make sure there's no streaks in the epoxy where the white glitter is. checking the rim to make sure everything looks nice and smooth, graduated. I'm gonna pull some more epoxy off the actual glue drip itself. I'm not so concerned about what that looks like because it will be covered with the rhinestones, but it's looking a little bit too bulky for me. By the time we factor in the bulk from the rhinestones, I think it's gonna to be too, too much of a 3D effect. I'm going for a 3D effect, but I don't think I'm going for that much of a 3D effect. Okay, so that should be good. And you guys, I mixed up way too much epoxy. I have 15 mLs left. So 24 ounce from Tipsy. Definitely do not need 30 milliliters of epoxy. So I'm just gonna use this on something else. And then we're gonna let that spin overnight. And as long as everything is nice and smooth in the morning, once it's cured, I am going to start rhinestoning and that will hopefully be the last coat of epoxy. So we're gonna, oh, don't forget to torch it, you guys. Um, so we're gonna let that spin after torching and then I will see you in the next clip. After that epoxy has fully cured, we're gonna go in with our rhinestone. So I'm just using this needle nosed glue tip bottle. Um, that I got on Amazon. I will link that for you guys below and then I'm using some liquid fusion and we want to be very minimal with the amount of glue that we're putting on when you press down your rhinestones if you're using too much glue it's going to cause the glue to squish up from underneath the rhinestone and it's going to kind of engulf your rhinestone in glue and then it's going to lose its shine so just be cautious, less is more with that glue. And what I'm doing first is going around the rim where we had exposed that white glitter and epoxy beneath the bloody drip. And I'm going to establish the rim first. So I wanna make sure that once we start going in to fill in the drip that we have kind of a good starting point. So like I had mentioned, it's not going to impede with the way that the lid is going to adhere to the rim. It's not gonna prevent your lid from being pressed down flat on the cup. 
So doing that all the way around the rim and then I'm gonna let that sit upside down with the bottom of the cup pointing up in the air. So if the rhinestones were to move um, down with gravity, it's going to stay in place. The table is going to cause it to stay right on the top rim of the cup in a straight line so we don't have to worry about anything moving. And then once the glue has cured around the rim, I'm going to go around the bottoms of the drip after that and we're going to establish the bottom of the drip. So I'm just going to follow along with where that hot glue drip is and we're going to set that up, make sure everything is the glue is cured in that section as well. Um, and then once that is cured, we're going to go in and fill in the essentially the center portion of the um, drip with all of the rhinestones. And I am using the Flynn Sisters Medium Siam Glitter, not glitter, rhinestones. Um, and I got a multi-size pack. And then that is, I believe, SS3 through SS12. And then I grabbed a pack of the SS20s as well, um, just so we had a variation of sizes. And I'm using the smaller rhinestones around the rim and then the bottom kind of defining the drip. And then towards the center where we have more flat surface of the drip, I'm gonna use the SS20s um, in combination with the bigger like SS10, SS12 to kind of fill those spaces in a lot quicker than the smaller stones. I also forgot to mention when I zipped right through the sticker cal portion, the True Crime Junkie sticker cal is from Banff Custom Creations. I did put a poll in my uh, makers Facebook group asking which one other makers had preferred. I gave a choice of three different decals and Upon looking at them further, I realized that by the time I added the drip to the cup that the decal that was my second choice was a lot longer. It was You Inspire My Inner Serial Killer, I believe, um, but it was a lot longer and it wouldn't have fit on the cup with the drip. So I opted to go for this shorter decal. Um, so I would definitely take that into consideration if you're doing a drip of this sort. Figure out your decal situation first and how you want to go about your drip. Um, and make sure that your decal is going to fit on the cup with the drip. You don't want to get too deep into this and not have your decal fit. So just a word of warning from somebody who learned the hard way. <laughs> So I'm just going to go around and finish filling in all of the center portion of the drip and then I'm going to let that sit overnight to fully dry. I would say in a couple of hours the rhinestones are usually good to touch but I don't like to put them under water or wash them for at least 24 hours just to make sure all of the glue is fully dried. We're not going to have any gummy glue kind of washing up from under the stones and getting on top of it. and causing them to look bad and lose their sparkle. Um, and I will also tell you guys, if you're rhinestoning, this little Bowen rhinestone, I don't recall what the turner is called, but it's not motorized. You can just turn it with your hand as you see fit. Um, this is definitely helpful if you're working on any sort of a rhinestone project. It saves your hand from cramping, from having to hold it. It's super lightweight. Um, I want to say I paid like mm, 100 bucks or something for it. I got it at TumblrCon. Um, last year. So definitely would recommend that if you do any sort of rhinestoning. And once I let that sit overnight and let that glue dry, this cup was fully done. I just took soap and water and washed the stones off after it was done to make sure I got all of the wax off. For those of you who have stuck with me so far, I appreciate you staying with me in this very long tutorial. That is all that I have for you today. And if you are not already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell button for notifications on future tutorials. And I will see you guys next weekend.